Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. Here in Israel united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, bro, come over here for a second, man. Come over here for a second, man. Let me show you something. What man on the earth don't have no color? He ain't got no pigment in his skin, right? Okay. So, for you to say Christ didn't have no color, Jesus Christ don't have no color, you saying he white, right? What'd you say? He, he does not have a fleshly body? Can you prove that? Can you prove it? Yeah, I can prove that he did have a fleshly body and his skin had a coat. That's right. Come, come check it out. Come, come on. I, I can barely hear you. Come, come, come let's have a, a two-minute conversation. Let me just show you that Christ has skin according uh, in the Bible. Right. Bring it out. Let's go to Revelation. Watch this. I'm going to show you that Christ had a physical body. And God has a physical body. Right. All right? But we hadn't been taught this because we've been taught by the media. We've been taught by uh, outside sources that really don't know, understand the Bible. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So we about to reveal Jesus Christ to you, my brother. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. If he, if he don't have no fleshly body, how does he have a head? How does he have hair? We read the King James Version, the Bible that's spread across all America. The number one selling book in the world. We read the Bible, the Holy Bible. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he got a head and he got hairs. And the color of those hairs were white like wool. Now, what animal has woolly textured hair? A, a sheep. A sheep, right? And what, and, uh, what people have sheep-like hair? What race of people on the earth have sheep-like hair? Black people. Look at the hair on your head, brother. That's the same hair sheep has. Right. Right. That's right. Uh, a horse has long, stringy hair. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. That's a different, that's called fur. Bring it up. That's a different, that's a different texture of hair. You see what I'm saying? So hold on, hold on, hold on. There's more. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So if he ain't got no, no fleshly body, how does he have eyes? His eyes were as a flame of fire. Look at these pictures up here. Look at these pictures. Look at these descriptions of Christ up here. Come, come, come right here so, so we can conversate, my brother. We ain't no, we just teaching you, my brother. We teaching you Christ's true color according to the Bible. Right. Now, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Who got white, woolly hair? Look at all these descriptions of Christ. Which one got white, woolly hair? Point to it. This one right here, right? So, right. already... This ain't in the Bible. Right. right. Just with the white woolly hair. Keep reading. And his eyes was a flame of fire. And his eyes was a flame of fire. Because Christ drank wine in moderation. Right. So his eyes was red. That's what happens when you... You look at the Bible, I also say, you don't post, like, you don't post, like, draw pictures and stuff. Like, what you think you look like? We're not supposed to draw a picture. No, we're not supposed to bow down to this picture. That's what Exodus 20 says. We're not, we're not bowing down to this. We just... Having a description of Jesus Christ. We can have an image, but we're not bowing down to this image. We're not saying that this is Jesus Christ. This is just a description or a depiction of Jesus Christ. Right. 
to, to get that cloud out of your head, because you said he didn't have no fleshly body. So that means he just a puff of smoke floating around. No, we showed you that Christ has a body, an earthly body, right? right. And his feet. And his what? And his feet. And his feet. What you do with feet? You walk around with your feet, right? right. They, you, you use your feet. That's flesh, right? right? And his feet like up to five brass. And his feet was in color like brass, my brother. What color is brass? What color is a penny? A penny is like brass. Brown, right? So already it's telling you the color of his flesh was brown. Now, hold on. There's more. Let's see how, how, uh, huh? I said two minutes. Yeah, my two minutes ain't up yet. Hold on, read. And his feet like up to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. As if they what? Burned in a furnace. Nah, they they he just a puff of smoke. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So if I burn some chicken on the barbecue grill, what color is gonna turn? It's gonna turn brown. If you burn some, if you burn some white toast. It's going to turn black, my brother. It's going to turn dark. That's what the Bible is telling you, that Jesus had skin and it was dark. It was black. That's you right. see that brother right here? That brother looked like Christ. That's right. We all look like Christ. Christ this, this is a lie right here, my brother. You see what I'm saying? Bring it out. Go, go bring your homies over here, my brother, because we we giving the truth over here. Right. John 832, my brother. We give him the truth. The truth is going to be heard by all ears. Right. Before the end come, my brother. But you can't say Jesus ain't got no color now. You can't say he, he ain't had no body. We just showed you that. You got it? All first, read that. This is the book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. Uh -huh. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. It's going to unlock your mind to understanding the mysteries of the Most High God. The mysteries of the Bible. Now let's go to Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Because all praise to the Most High. We got we to gotta tear down all these strongholds on our people. Right. Christ ain't got no color. God is a puff of smoke. Right. We got to tear down all these lies, all these false doctors. Read what you got, huh? The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 2. Bring it out. But your iniquity. But your what? Your iniquities uh -huh. have separated between you and your God. That's what separates us between, from our God. That's what separates us from the Most High God. Our iniquity. Our sin. That's why the Most High is not hearing our prayers. Because we are in the midst of sin. What is sin according to the Bible? What he say? I can't, I can't hear you. Pull, pull up here, my brother. Pull up here for a second. Let's, let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's reason in the scriptures. All praise to the Most High. All right, all praise, all praise, my brother. We, we out here in the rain. And, hey, we the guys of the earth. <laughs> we gonna take over this earth one day. Rain ain't gonna stop us. So, what, how you doing? How you doing? What's your name, my brother? Jimmy Kelly. Jimmy Kelly, I'm Adonijah. Nice to meet you. This your son right here? That's my son. All praise to the Most High. So, so what we out here doing is we teaching our people their true race according to the Bible. Okay. It's 18 nations in this Bible. Which one do we come from? We see, we don't know. We haven't been taught that. You see what I'm saying? Because they wouldn't allow us to read and write in slavery. So therefore, whatever they told us, we take as fact. But it, indeed, in fact. That's not what the Bible said. They taught us lies. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So go to uh, go back to Deuteronomy 4 and 27. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a couple of things in the scriptures, and then we're gonna talk about what sin is according to the Bible. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. So come, uh, uh, officer. I mean, Jeshurun. So Jeshurun, come on this side. So it said. We ain't got it. Oh, Alright, I'll It says, the Lord shall scatter us among the nations. So, there's something called the transatlantic slave trade, right? That's that's where they scattered us in slavery. They took, uh, they took, uh, they took some of us to uh, South America, North America. They took slaves to uh, Europe. They took slaves to Japan. They took slaves to China. They took slaves to uh, Iraq. 
Arabia, they took slaves all over the world. That's what the transatlantic slave trade. So what did God say about the Israelites? And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. So that's why we live in all nations. The Israelites live in all nations. That's why in the Bible when it says, go teach all nations, it's because we are scattered in all nations. We're going to teach our people in that nation. Read. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. And we shall be left few in number in the heathen. Because the majority of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians live on this side of the world. On the other side of the world, it's scattered. You see what I'm saying? Read. Whether the Lord shall lead you. So the Lord led us because of our sins. Because we didn't want to keep the commandments. That's why God led us into all these nations. To serve slavery. You see what I'm saying? That's why on the flyer it says the truth about slavery. Why did we go into slavery? It's because we are God's chosen race and he put us in slavery because we disobeyed him. Right. Because when your son disobeyed you, what you do? Punish him. You punish him, right? So it's likewise with God. He's our father. We're his children. If we disobey him, he punishes us. That's right. But he don't come down to give us a whooping. Right. Right. He, he sent the other nations to give us a whooping. That's, that's literally, you need, because they used to whip us in slavery, right? Is that it on that? Okay, go to uh, 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Let's see what sin is. And then let's see what happens when we sin. All right, read that. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. It says, whosoever committed sin. Read. Transgressed also the law. Transgress God's laws. What does it mean to transgress something? Or trespass. What does what does that mean? You go against. You're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. Somebody say you trespassing on my land. That means you ain't supposed to be there. You see what I'm saying? So when you transgress, it means you break God's commandments. Right. So He says sin is what? For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you're breaking God's commandments. Right. The Bible is a simple book, but because we've been taught by our enemies. They didn't teach us correctly. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So they don't tell us, oh, sin is breaking God's laws. And then they go read God's laws, A, B, C, D, E. If you're breaking these laws, you're transgressing against God. You see what I'm saying? They don't teach us our trespass. You see what I'm saying? Because we God's chosen people, and the reason we went into slavery is because we transgressed his laws. You see what I'm saying? So in order to get out of slavery, what do we got to do? Not break his laws. The Bible is a simple book. You That's see what right. I'm saying? We got to know who we are in the Bible. You ever heard of the Hebrews? Yes, the Hebrews, the Israelites, or the Jews. Right. All right? We, we say a saying all the time. Um, man, they work at me like a Hebrew slave. Why do we say that? It's because we are the Hebrews. The joke, right. the joke is on us. We, they ain't working us like a Hebrew slave. They working us... We are, we are Hebrew slaves. That's what they do. You That's see what right. I'm saying? So, uh, so we breaking God's laws if we transgress the commandments. Now I'm gonna give you a couple commandments because God gave His chosen people a way of life to live. Right. You see what I'm saying? He gave us civil laws, how we supposed to treat each other. He gave us moral laws, how I'm supposed to conduct myself as an Israelite man. He gave us dietary laws. What we can eat and what we can't eat. He gave us ceremonial laws, what we supposed to celebrate, and he gave us sacrificial laws, what we supposed to sacrifice. But Christ was the ultimate sacrifice, so we don't keep the sacrificial law no more. Right. So go to uh, go to Deuteronomy 28. Right. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from the beginning, and we gonna go over really quickly. Who God's, how we prove we are God's chosen people. Right. Because there's many races out there that's claiming to be the Israelites. They claiming to be the Hebrews. You got the uh, Jewish people, they claiming to be God's chosen people. Now you got the Arabs, they claiming to be God's chosen people. But who is God's chosen people? Let's, let's go into the Bible and find out. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses, after he came down out off the mountain and had the commandments. He said, it's going to come to pass, meaning it's going to happen in the future. What? Read that. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If the Israelites don't want to listen to these commandments. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? Get that sign, soldier. 
All these curses, all these curses shall, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if we didn't listen to the commandments, all these curses would come upon us and overtake us. So is a curse a good thing or a bad thing, young man? A curse. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. You see how simple the Bible is? But we have to be taught correctly what these curses are. Who is cursed? All right, let's go to verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the city. You could just look on these signs right here. Who was cursed in the city? What are these people doing in the city in Jackson, Mississippi, all around the world? What are these people doing? Let's look down here. What are, what are, uh, we ain't got that one either? All right, all person. So what's going on with this brother right here? He getting whipped. So any, any city in America, who live in the ghetto? 95% blacks. 95% blacks. That's an astronomical number. Why, why isn't the, uh, the other nations living in the ghettos at an astronomical number? Why is it 95% of the Chinese living in the ghetto? Because we are God's chosen people. And he punishes us for our sins. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I'll first. So put that down, soldier. Read that again. Cursed shall thou be in the city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. So we already know who was cursed in the cotton field. We were. The blacks, Hispanics, and everybody on this side right here. We was cursed in the in the fields. Right. We was cursed in the cotton fields. We was made to, to pick cotton, tobacco, uh, rice, beans. We was made to pick we was made to work for free. Free labor for 350 years. These are facts. So God said these are curses. This is this is called divine punishment. We got divine laws when Moses came off the uh, off the mountain talking with the Most High God. He gave him divine laws. Divine means from, from God. Right. So if we break those divine laws, guess what we get? Divine punishment. We get punished from God. And we can't get out. We can't escape that punishment. Right. Verse 32. Verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. It says our sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. Who that happened to? Who, who sold our children to, to Master Charles in Virginia? Who split up our families? They still doing it to this day. Right. right. They doing it to, to the so-called uh, tribe of Issachar, which is the uh, so-called Hispanics or the Mexicans. They doing it to this day, splitting up families. If you watch the news, that's what they doing. So they still doing it to this day, right? Thy sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So once they took our children, there was nothing we could do to get them back. But cry. That's why it says our eyes would fail with longing for them all the day long. You've seen the slave movies. You've seen Roots. Django. I'm a star. You've seen all those movies. That's, that's our history and it's in the Bible. Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And we have no military might. We have no economic might to go buy our children out of bondage. This is this is history. These are facts coming out of the Bible. That's right. Go to verse 48. Watch this. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So God says, since we didn't want to serve him and keep the commandments, we're going to serve our enemies. Who are the children of Israel enemies? It's about to explain, right? Therefore thou shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord sent against us, read. In hunger. In hunger. If we want something to eat, where we got to go to get our food? <laughs> you got to go to the so-called white man, right? You got to go to the other nations. That's what the Bible is saying. The yeah. children of Israel will have to go to the other nations for their food. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. We want something to drink. Aquafina. Dasani. You want a Corona. You want a uh, Coca-Cola. Guess where you gotta go? Guess who owns Coca-Cola? The other races of people. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes we got on our back. If you look in the tag, it's gonna say made where? Taiwan. Made in Taiwan, made in China, made in Korea, made by the other nations. Read. And in want of all things. And if we want anything in this world, a, a car, a driver's license, an education, we have to go to the other nations. We can't even teach our own people their own history. Why, why would they teach our children black history? It start off in, 16, in the 1600s with the transatlantic slave trade. 
Was we not a race of people before then? Did we not live before the 1600s? Yes! And it's, it, the Bible is that history. It documents all that history before the 1600s. You see what I'm saying? Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. This is a yoke of iron right here. Who did that to us? The other races. The other people did that to us. That's why the Bible is a true book. This is a prophecy by Moses over 5,000 years ago. And it happened. See, so didn't that make the Bible a true book? Didn't that make us God's chosen people, the Israelites, the Jews? That's why all, this, all these things is happening to us. Finish that out. And in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Until he destroyed us mentally. That's why they wouldn't let us read and write. Because they knew one day we would pick up the Bible and say, man, the Jews show sound blood like they, like they us, like they black people. And the Jews are black people. Go to the 68. Let's see what else happened to the Israelites. And then I'm going to show you some color in the Bible to further prove that we are the children of the book. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God is going to bring us into Egypt. Get that precept for Egypt. God is going to bring us into Egypt. You know what the children of Israel were doing in Egypt? Why did they were in slavery, right? That's why Moses had to go to the Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Right. You see, because we were serving hard slavery. So God said he's going to put us in Egypt again. Let's see what Egypt means. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of what? The house of bondage. So Egypt in the Bible means house of bondage. That's what the word Egypt means. So when God said, I'm going to bring you into Egypt, he's really saying, I'm going to bring you into another house of bondage. How? Again, with ships. With what? With ships. Who went into slavery on slave ships? Our people did. The right. Bible is a true book, a That's book right. of prophecy. That what would happen to the Israelites if they disobeyed the commandments. Right. It tells what, we, what, what would happen to us if we obeyed the commandments. But we already know we disobeyed the commandments because we went into slavery on slave ships. Keep reading. By the way, we're all about to speak unto thee. Moses said, just like I'm saying it is the same way it's going to happen. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Thou shalt see it, our homeland, no more again. What? Because Jerusalem is our homeland. But Moses said, y'all ain't going to see this land no more because y'all going into slavery on slave ships. Right. And y'all, the memory of, of y'all being Israelites is going to be erased. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And when you get off the slave ships, you're going to be sold to your enemies. Sold to Master Charles in Virginia. Right. Sold to uh, Master Jenkins in uh, Alabama. Right. The Bible is a true book. Bring it up. You have to be taught correctly by the correct people. You see what I'm saying? You can't have the so uh, the other races teach a book that don't pertain to them. Right. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. For slave men and slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man is going to redeem us out of slavery. Uh, Martin Luther King tried to redeem us out of slavery. Right. What happened to him? He got he got put to death. Uh, Malcolm X tried to redeem us out of slavery. What happened to him? He got put to death. Marcus Garvey tried to redeem us out of slavery. That was in the 20s. What happened to him? He got put to death. So many people have come and tried to redeem us out of slavery, but they was all slain because they didn't have a word of God back in them. That's you right. see what I'm saying? So go to uh, Jeremiah 14 and verse 2. So we're going to prove that what color, we prove that the curses happened to us. And they would happen to the to the so called to the Jews. So what does that make us? We the Jews of the Bible. That's, That's right. right. We the Israelites. We God's chosen people. Everybody's not God. Every race of people is not God's chosen people. That's right. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter fourteen and verse two. Huh? Judah morning. Judah morning. So Judah is the head of all the tribes of the, of the nation of Israel. Judah would be. American blacks. These are, these are the names in the Bible that God gave us. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, on down. And these are the names they renamed us in slavery. American blacks, West Indians, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, 
That's what the, the other nations renamed us. You see what I'm saying? So God called us this, but the uh, the other nations in slavery is like, nah, we can't call them that because one day they're going to pick up the Bible and say, they from the tribe of Judah? No, so we got to rename them American blacks. That's why on your birth certificate, it might say one thing. It might say black on your birth certificate. It say black on my birth certificate. But on, on your, your son's birth certificate, it might say African American. On your grandfather's birth certificate, it might say Negro. Right. That's why they keep changing our nationality every so every 20 years or so. It's because they don't want us to know who we really are in the That's Bible. right. That's right. So they try to hide who we are. Did you finish that? Judah Mordis and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. So the Bible says the, the Jews, the tribe of Judah, Jew is just short for Judah. That's the head tribe. So Judah is black unto the ground. What color is the dirt? If I start digging in this dirt right here, what color is it going to be? It's going to be black, right? The Bible is a very simple book. That's the right. Jews are black unto the ground. Right. They dark. Dark. The deeper I dig, the darker the soil going to get. Right. You see what I'm saying? Read. Really? And the cry of Jerusalem is going up. Job 30 and 30. So we, we just go in and show color in the Bible. Color is in the Bible. And it does matter. You see what I'm saying? Because we are God's chosen people. We have to know who we are in order to know where we're going. Right. Because if we don't know who we are, we don't know where we're going. You see what I'm saying? Read that. Job chapter 30 and verse 30. My skin is black of my skin is black upon me. He said his skin is black upon me. This is the prophet Job. He was a black man according to the Bible. That's right. What we got? Song of Solomon 1 and 5. So we going through the Bible showing you black men. All the men in this Bible were black men that obeyed the commandments. So God dealt with them on a high level. Right. You see what I'm saying? The reason he don't deal with us like that because of our sins. You see what I'm saying? So read that. The book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. So you know who Solomon is, right? You heard the name Solomon before? Solomon was King David's son. So you heard of David and Goliath before? Young man, you heard of David and Goliath? The giant Goliath and David went out with the sling and, and hit him in the head? You heard of that before? This is his son. Read that. I am black, but comely. So King Solomon said he is what? Black. But comely. Black but comely. Comely means good looking. That's, you ever heard the term black and beautiful? King Solomon originated that statement. That's right. Right here in the Bible. He said, I'm black and comely. I'm black and good looking. Me. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Me. As the tents of Kedar, uh -huh. as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun have looked upon me. Because the sun has looked upon me. What happens when you be out in the sun all day? You get black. You get black. That's what That's Solomon is saying. He, right. he got dark because he was outside all day. You see what I'm saying? That's nothing to us. We can stay in the sun from sun up to sundown, and all that happens is we get a little darker. That lets you know he's like talking about a, a so-called Edomite or a so-called white man because he can't stay in the sun all day. Right. He, you can't even, he can't even touch his skin when, when he stay in the sun all day. This was a black man according to the Bible. Lamentations. Lamentations, folks. So we're going over color scriptures right now. It's, it's, it's plenty of color scriptures in the Bible. Did you know Paul was black? In the New Testament. We, we read the Old Testament. We're going to go to the New Testament. Let's see. Christ was, was a black man. Okay, we ask that's what we hear. We here to answer your questions, my brother. I know we ain't gonna be able to do it all right now. But right. I was on something and I had to stop. Okay. The Lord let me hear. Yes, sir. But uh, I'm, I want to know who can I get in contact with? Okay. Okay. Uh, on the back right here, we got a telephone number. You can call that number. Ask all the questions in the world. Or we, we got a school right here at 2460 Terry Road. We meet every Saturday at 2 o'clock. That's it. We have. We, there is other other high holy days that we meet on, that uh, the ceremonial laws that we keep, so we meet on those days as well. But every Saturday is, you know, God's Sabbath day. That's where we meet every Saturday at 2 o'clock, and, and sometimes throughout the week. So, you, the number's on there, that's who you can get in contact with. But, 
Right, and the extension. The extension's down there too. Extension 750. So you dial that number, hit extension 750, and that's going to give you somebody in our camp that can answer all your questions. But I want to see one of your questions right now. What you got? Right, it started off with two. Okay, so what two people, man? Two people. that's a deep question, but I'm just going to answer it like this. Adam and Eve were not the first two created. When, when God created the, the heaven, go to Matthew, I mean, uh, Genesis chapter 1. When God created the, uh, the birds, did he just create one blue bird, one male blue bird, and one female blue bird? Or did he create a multitude of them? Right, so when it comes to humans, why would he just create one human? I, I don't know what I'm saying, it's in the Bible. It is in the Bible. It, it, it doesn't show, but all the races show, I don't mean, and they see it. So, I'm, I'm just wanting, uh, verse 20, 21, read that. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 21. And God created great whales, uh -huh. and every living creature that moved, uh -huh. which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Uh -huh and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So when God created every living thing on the planet, he created multitudes of living things, including people. But he created a man separate from every other man on the earth. And his name was called Adam. And then he gave him his wife Eve. So there was other people already on the face of the earth. When he created the prototype Adam, or the main Adam that he dealt with. You see what I'm saying? So just to briefly answer your question, we're going to wrap it up. Let's get Matthew 26. Genesis 1 to 26. All thanks to the Most High. Read that. Verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So he made man. Read that part again, he made man. And God said, let us make man in our image, after, like, after our likeness. Man is going into mankind. Mankind. Read verse 27. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the likeness of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Created he them, the multitude. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.